What's going on YouTube? Florida Man Knives here with a quick unboxing video. And this one is gonna be another exclusive from Blade HQ actually. So if you're familiar with their exclusives that they do release, then you probably will know which one this is gonna be. <laughs> Lots of foam popcorn here for this Spider Co. Rock Lobster with the natural G10 scales and CPM M4 steel. So if you're familiar, Blade HQ does Spider Co. exclusives pretty regularly. Um, they definitely do at least one a year. <laughs> and you can see right there to keep the moisture out of here because again, this is gonna be CPM M4 steel. So before I open this thing up, talking about that, M4 steel, of course, is not gonna be a true stainless steel and this one is not going to be coated so if, if you do not maintain it it will definitely patina or rust if you're really not careful with it and then again this is going to be a blade hq exclusive right here just really excited about this they <laughs> always sell out pretty quick um again the spider coat rock lobster and yeah let's just get into this i'll go over the specs here in a minute but man just <laughs> really love the color of this g10 right here this is going to be my first knife that i've ever handled with the natural g10 scales and opening it up <laughs> there you have that m4 and right here this is going to be a seiki city japan knife and you see that anzo design right there so <laughs> before i get into the specs on this the uh, Rock Lobster has been discontinued for several years now. The original model actually came in VG10 and a darker green uh, G10 scale. But the cool thing about this, yep, you can spidey flick it, <laughs> is that it is designed by Danish knife maker Jens Anzo. And you can see right there, of course. And this was actually Anzo's first full production knife design. So that was something that was really unique about this. This was definitely highly coveted by Spider Co. collectors, I know, in the original model. Um, while it went for 230, I believe, the uh, secondary prices on it are ridiculous. Um, you know, you're talking like $400 or, or something along those lines. So really excited when they re-release this in this exclusive steel right here, of course. And the really neat thing about this is the price is actually a dollar cheaper than the original, um, coming in at $229, again, for this Blade HQ exclusive. They are already sold out, so I was able to pick one of these up. They were in stock for, I don't know, almost 24 hours, I want to say, maybe more, but you know, definitely sold out after a couple of days. So you are going to have this satin finish, full flat grind right there. It's going to be super slicey really like this blade shape and of course you're gonna have a sheep's foot right there at the tip um, you can see how the grind lines are kind of on there giving it a quick close-up definitely razor sharp out of the box as with all spider coat knives you're gonna have a lanyard hole and two-way reversible pocket clip which i actually like that they um you know kept it off of this lock face side um or opening face side i should say you know it's definitely not going to be favorable for left-handed people so sorry to all of those out there but getting into the specs of this you are going to have an overall length of 8.5 inches you're going to have a blade length of right around 3.75 inches depending on where you measure you can see the shape of that handle right there that is to allow for what they say is a four finger choil. Um, I could have actually done for a little bit more of a cutout there. And then the handle length is gonna be right at about 4.75 inches. So the blade is gonna be pretty stout, but with this full flat grind and the shape, definitely very slicey. And you can see it does slim down here at the tip, but it's gonna come in at 0 0.13 inches. And then the weight on this guy, is gonna be relatively heavy compared to some of the other spider codes out there because of these stainless steel liners that run through the full top portion of the handles. You can see they are translucent, which is pretty neat. But again, the weight on this, 
It's going to be 4.13 ounces by my scale. Uh, Spyderco, I believe, has it listed at 4.1, but you know, not going to be the worst for EDC, not going to be the best, depending on your preferences. But with these liners, you know, it's definitely going to be pretty robust. Um, you know, you're not going to have any flex or anything like that, as opposed to if it was linerless. And then speaking of liners, it is going to be a liner lock, of course. And then you can see that little ball bearing detent right there. And definitely is pretty substantial. Really appreciate that. Um, I don't really like when liner locks have a uh, really soft detent. Um, just in general, I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of liner locks, but you know, with this knife, it's, you know, I'm a Spyderco fanboy. So if you watch the channel, you know that. And it's an exclusive from Blade HQ. I've always wanted one of these. And this design is just really, really hard to get your hands on, especially for an affordable price. So really excited about this. Um, really love the open back construction right here. I don't know if they have any custom back skills or anything, but I'm definitely going to leave it stock as is. Um, you know, the one gripe I guess I could say is that they don't have a deep carry wire pocket clip, but on this particular model that does not bother me, especially for it being somewhat of a larger knife. Um, just really, really loving this thing. Fantastic. Before I compare it to some of the other knives, I, you know, did want to address it is an M4 steel and it is called the Rock Lobster, which I do find to be a bit ironic because, you know, M4 steel is going to be a little bit prone to corrosion. And the Rock Lobster, to my knowledge, is a spiny lobster, which is what we actually have down here in Florida. Uh, if you go lobstering in the Keys, that's what, what you will be catching. They're going to be a little bit more orange or brown in color before you do cook them up as opposed to the bright red and they also do not have claws um, so not sure if that was the true reference on this particular knife but regardless i just do think it's ironic but i at the same time love that it has m4 steel so that leads me to some comparisons my only other experience with m4 steel actually is in the benchmade bug out this is going to be the smoky mountain knife works exclusive and I went with the black Cerakoted blade. They have since released the Desert Warrior edition as well. But you can see definitely quite a bit larger of a knife in the Spyderco Rock Lobster. Um, cutting edge wise, you're also going to have definitely a substantially longer cutting edge on the Rock Lobster. But this Benchmade Bug Out is, of course, a smaller knife. And getting into some Spydercos that are going to be better for size comparison, you, of course, got the Paramilitary 2. So the Rock Lobster, you can see, is actually going to be pretty comparable as far as overall length. Just a hair bit longer, but your cutting edge is definitely going to be significantly longer. And the handles are going to be pretty comparable. Um, comparing it directly to the PM2, I did want to know, this thing has a sharpening choil. <laughs> a sharpening choil from Spyderco, which is just really really cool um you know that they did have those on some of their older designs uh not so much nowadays you know speaking of older designs if you want to take a look at like the jess horn <laughs> love this thing keep an eye out for a review this is actually my dad's and he has lent it to me i'm definitely going to clean it up but you can see it's got a sharp nature oil there and a lot of their older knives from the early 2000s did so maybe that's one thing they'll bring back in the future but you know just really really like that little attribute some other knives to compare it to bringing out the spyderco para 3 lightweight of course going to be substantially smaller than the rock lobster as it is going to be substantially smaller than the pm2 but you know something that's going to be more comparable you'll have the spyderco manix 2 lightweight which is one of my all-time favorites in addition to the pm2 now uh, this one just so happens to be the knife joker exclusive and cpm 20 cv just love this color. Um, also does have translucent scales, which I have definitely come to be a fan of. Um, don't have it with me at the moment in reach, but check out the Ontario Wraith Ice Glacier series in translucent blue. Really love that one as well, just because it's really priced, really great, and it's also just really cool to look at. Um, another Spider Co. You're gonna have the Capara, which is gonna be just phenomenal. Love this knife. This is gonna be the DLT Trading exclusive, and you can see gonna be pretty similar in overall length. A little bit more similar than the PM2. The cutting edge right here is actually gonna be practically the same. 
Uh, however, this does not have a sharpening choil. <laughs> Fun fact, actually, with uh, the Phillips right here, Phillips design, I should say, excuse me. If you take a look, he actually, on his YouTube channel, he did put a sharpening choil on his particular knife, which I uh, found to be pretty funny, but I digress. Getting back into some spider coats for comparison, you've got the Native Chief, which is another larger spider coat, definitely going to be larger, both in blade length and handle length and cutting edge than this Rock Lobster. So, you know, there you have a, a pretty good wide comparison of spider coat knives if you're familiar. Um, you know, the last one right here would be the Endura, just really obviously, again, I'm a spider coat fanboy, but just loving this Rock Lobster, loving the looks of it. Uh, one last comparison, you've got this Buck Marksman. Uh, this is a Buck of the Month, actually, for May. There was only 500 of these made, which is pretty cool. So as you can tell, I do like the exclusive models, but getting this thing up close again, <laughs> definitely interesting how the blade handles the oils from the hand, as opposed to some of the other steels out there. Um, I haven't fully decided if I'm going to keep this thing treated or not I'll be honest you know it definitely part of me really wants to patina it just to see how it turns out um, but at the same time you know I might just end up maintaining it at least a little bit and seeing how it holds up in the long term um, so I'll definitely post the video on that within the next few days I'll, I'll definitely be deciding because I'm sure this will patina quite rapidly, especially in the environment in which I live in. Again, Florida Man Knives here got 100% humidity in most of the year, so if I take this thing outside and EDC it, it'll probably patina just sitting in my pocket. So overall, just really, really unique ergonomics. Uh, I've been wanting to wait a little bit into this video before I did address that. That is one thing that you're either, either going to love or hate this knife. Um, I actually like the design of it. I, I found that to be the case actually with most of Jen Zonzo's designs. Um, <laughs> they're definitely really unique, pretty funky looking, but I found that they're pretty functional. Um, this one, however, you know, they did advertise that this cutout is going to be obviously for your index and middle finger, and that will basically get your hand further up into the handle of the knife that way your blade is going to be closer to the cutting surface so that is the reason for that design and i actually don't mind it um you know if you do choke up here you can actually <laughs> scoot all the way up with your ring finger which is pretty impressive i do have extra large hands so really you know interesting ergonomics um my one complaint maybe i think would be that they rounded this off a little bit more but yeah i i do like them it's you know, not going to be something that I'm going to be just oozing over like the <laughs> Swish Bowie that has just practically perfect ergonomics in my opinion. But, um, you know, again, that is just my opinion. And another one that I absolutely love, as I already brought it out earlier, of course, the Paramilitary 2. Fantastic ergonomics. So I will admit the Rock Lobster doesn't do it for me, you know, to that regard but I definitely don't dislike it. Um, however, if you had smaller hands, I will say, this might bother you right here, uh, the thickness of this portion, especially with that steep drop off. But again, you're either gonna love this knife or you're gonna hate it. I really think that's gonna be the case. Um, just overall, I'm really excited that they brought this thing back to the market. And you know, that kind of leads me to a little sidebar here, having both of these knives out. Um, two knives that were discontinued and a couple of exclusives now have been brought back so uh yeah really interested to see if they'll be doing anything more in the future i actually remember when i unboxed this one i had said the same thing having no idea that this was going to be coming out so uh you know for the spider coat collectors out there i don't know if you'll be a fan or not because maybe that'll depreciate the value of some of your original models but for everyone that can't afford the prices on the secondary market, I think it's really cool that they're doing this, especially with exclusive models because you're gonna get unique handle colors and definitely high quality steel. Um, this M4, I'll definitely be curious to see how it holds up over time, uh, you know, just in general and relative to the Benchmade M4. You know, I think the heat treatment on both, you know, should be, I would imagine pretty comparable 
I don't really know who has more experience with M4 steel. I know Benchmade does use M4 with their Freak line, their Mini Freak and Super Freak and all that, but you know, this M4 steel features on pretty much every Blade HQ exclusive Spyderco nowadays. So really curious over time how it'll hold up edge retention wise, see if the toughness holds up to all the hype and we'll see if I decide to let it patina or not. But really, really liking this thing. Love the color. I just, you know, I've seen them in a thousand pictures online, as I'm sure many others have. But, you know, this translucent natural jade or green G10 um, is really, really nice. You know, not for everyone, I'm sure. I, I do think it looks really nice with the black DLC coated blades that they do and black hardware. But it's one of those colors that also looks just as good with silver and a plain old satin finish blade. Um, you know, this is going to have bronze washers, so definitely pretty smooth once you get it past that detent ball. Pretty easy to spidey flick, despite the fact that half of the hole is going to be covered up just like this Swedish Bowie. But I would say it's easier to spidey flick than the Swedish Bowie is. Um, not by much, but definitely a little bit. Not that this is a direct comparison between the two knives. Uh, definitely, you know, they're in different categories, 100%, but really, really liking this overall. Um, I'm really excited to use this sheep's foot blade shape. It's been a while since I've had a knife with this particular blade shape. It's definitely very functional, and it leaves the tip of the knife pretty stout, depending on the company and how they grind it. So I really like that. <laughs> and it's called a rock lobster at the end of the day i i do kind of wish they just like put that somewhere because it's such a funny name um you know swish bowie you know really fantastic but that's the name of it paramilitary too whatever you know but the rock lobster come on that's <laughs> that's just funny but really really curious um how i will like this knife over time i'm sure a lot of people that purchase this will probably sell it instantly before the knife patinas at all but I don't know, Ooh, not the easiest to thumb flick. Um, there you go. But you don't really need to do that with this. This is just, it feels super high quality, especially for the Seiki factory. Um, taking a look, you got not quite perfect blade centering, but pretty dang close. Overall fit and finish is looking really, really nice. You can see up close here. Um, I'm a, you know, a huge fan of the Seiki City Japan factory. You know, maybe they're not going to be as high quality as the Taichung factory, but in my opinion, the knives that they put out fit and finish wise, uh, you know, their quality control is going to be up to par with the Golden Colorado factory. That's just, again, my opinion, but I've noticed the plate centering. It's going to be pretty comparable between the two. Not that it really matters. Um, you know, it's spider coat either way. You're going to be getting a fantastic knife. They're hands down my favorite brand. And I just am really, really excited that they're bringing back these discontinued models. You know, it just, I've always looked at these things in pictures and, you know, same with the Swedish Bowie. And then you'll be like, oh, let's see how much they are. You know, now maybe they've gone down in price and, you know, you check the forums or <laughs> check eBay even. Oof. And yeah, they're going to be... Uh, <laughs> pretty pricey so really really like that they're doing that so big shout out to Spyderco of course and Blade HQ for making this happen you know really happy that I was able to pick one of these up uh, props to Blade HQ their site didn't crash but you know it doesn't have a compression lock so maybe if it was a paramilitary 2 or a pair of 3 it would have um, yeah really really excited about this knife uh, I really like how it looks in the closed position it's one thing I did want to note you know, not going to be necessarily the best in pocket, but, you know, not going to be too, too tall. You can see pretty comparable, actually, to the Swish Bowie there, which I think is phenomenal in the pocket. And then as far as the thickness of the handles, you can see it's actually going to be a fair bit thinner than the PM2. Um, there you go. You can see that difference. And that'll definitely be noticeable in the pocket. So I think this will probably feel a bit more like a Manix, if I had to guess or Manix 2, I should specify. Um, this, is, of course, is the lightweight. I do not have the original Manix 2 with G10 scales and stainless steel liners. But, you know, the Manix is going to be a little bit thicker, but you see 
kind of the overall profile I think will be comparable. But <laughs> let's see it. Oh, not being able to spidey flick it. There we go. <laughs> Just really liking this thing. Love the feeling of this G10. Um, you know, not actually super squared off either as I'm observing this a little bit more. You see they did chamfer that edge a bit. Um, definitely a nice touch compared to the paramilitary 2 right here or the para 3 G10. You know, it's not going to be fully contoured like the Shaman or like, you know, some of the exclusives like this Capara, but that is a really nice touch and that is definitely noticeable in the hand. I was kind of wondering like why this is feeling so much different than what I expected and that is definitely the reason. So really nice detail there. Uh, <laughs> loving this thing, but again, it's an exclusive Spyderco, so why wouldn't I, right? Um, really like the blade shape and let's see how this M4 holds up. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and if you were able to pick one of them up, uh, congratulations and let me know what you guys think of yours or if you're going to keep it or not. Um, also, let me know what you guys think as far as if I should let this thing patina or not. You know, I'd be curious to see people's opinions. You know, I'm not going to do like an acid stone wash or anything like that, but maybe I'll just kind of let it run its course and see what happens. So really appreciate everyone watching and hope everyone has a great day. Thanks.